This is a two minute warning, repeat a two minute warning. Hey folks, I'm just letting my uh, computer boot up. I didn't bring my print off stuff with me. It's probably on my printer right now. <laughs> you have the agenda? I do have the agenda in front of me here. Yeah, I have the front pictures. So I'm just hoping to get, uh, get my computer running. But we can call to order here. We'll say that it's 10 o'clock. And we'll recognize that we're conducting our business today, principally on the territories of the Hupatchis and the Tshot First Nations, as our main office is located in, in the Albany Valley. That being said, all of us are coming to you live on YouTube um, via various new channel territories as, in addition, uh, potentially even some Coast Salish territories as well. And with that, uh, I will say that we are currently conducting our meeting in a hybrid manner. We have several directors here with us today, and we also have folks online who are both directors and or staff members. I can't really tell if there's anybody attending the meeting, however. You can watch our uh, broadcasts on our YouTube channel, or they are also embedded in the uh, meeting calendar item if you go onto our website at acrd.bc.ca. In addition, we do not monitor the comment section or the live comment section on YouTube on anything that we're really broadcasting. So official communications during question period from uh, citizens and residents would be through uh, an email address, responses at acrd.bc.ca. And we'll check in at the end of the meeting whenever that occurs. So I will identify that um, myself, in addition to myself, uh, we have directors and vice chair, John McNabb and Kel Roberts, as well as Renee LeCourcier, LeCourcier uh, as well as staff members, uh, Daniel Sayan and uh, Wendy Thompson. Okay, with that in mind, that brings us to the next agenda item. And my computer's dead. Awesome. Um, we have the approval of the agenda. I don't believe we have anything to add, and I don't think there's any late items. Is that correct? All right. Then. So Wendy, moved. Thank you very much, Director Roberts. Do we have a second? Thank you, Director Shannon. Okay. Any comments? All those in favor? All opposed. Oh no, I have the agenda. I just want to scroll through. Okay. No. 
Zeit. I just need to plug my head. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the next item we have with us is, or for us, is the minutes for the community of the whole meeting dated February 23rd, 2022. Thank you, Director McNabb, for moving. Second. Okay, the minutes. Thank you. And then the seconded by Director Shannon. Any comments? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Well opposed. Okay, motion carried. So I would note that it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that we do have a quorum because of the people who are here, but I am counting the folks who have their cameras off as being here. Um, if you don't indicate a yes or a no, I'm assuming that your vote is yes, just for the record, I suppose. With that in mind, that brings us to item four, which is request for decisions regarding um, item A, which is the 2022 grant and aid follow-up. So I'm wondering, Terry, if you just wanted to introduce this while I quickly grab my charger and plug it in. Definitely. Um, okay, so we're nearing, I think, the grant, end of the grant and aid process for 2022. There are two grants that have been deferred that we need to discuss today. And then I also did a reach out to staff at Tofino, Uculet, and Port Alberni regarding the clause in our policy about no double dipping. Uh, so Tofino and Uculet both haven't completed their um, process yet. Uh, there is one organization, Central West Coast Forest Society, or RED, I think they're renaming themselves as, for District of Uculet, that's an issue. Um, Director Steer, I just got the list from Tofino yesterday, so I'll maybe just email you back and highlight the ones that are potential double dipping issues for Tofino and let you guys decide at your council table what you want to do with those. Um, and then from the city, there is two, and you guys have completed your community investment program already at the city. And those are the Alberni Community and Women's Services Society, as well as the Alberni District Fall Fair. I'm actually recommending that we waive the double dipping policy for those two organizations because um, the Alberni Community and Women's Services Society donation from our grant and aid or community investment um, thing from the city is for like bus passes and recreation passes. So I feel like it's completely different, but that's definitely up to the directors. And then from the fall fair aspect, our contribution is in kind. Um, they come in and use our printers and laminators to make their signs. And then from the city, they're donating them tents. So um, I just felt like those aren't um, deal breakers for me on my end. So I'm recommending that you waive the double dipping policy for those, but that's up to the directors. Um, but before we get to that part of it, I would just say that we need to walk through these two. So it's the Port Alberni Marine Rescue Society and the Port Alberni Family Guidance Association that we still need to decide. And I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, I have Director McNabb. Yes, Mr. Chair, I would move that uh, we fund the uh, grant and aid uh, Port Alberni Marine Rescue Society uh, in the amount that we did last year of $6,000. All right, thank you very much, Director McNabb. Do we have a second? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Director Bogner. Okay, any comments or questions? I have Director Shannon and then Director Bell. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm in support of the $6,000 where I am struggling with, and I know that grant needs are a little bit uh, different with how we do things, but for what we've allocated in 2022, and I mentioned this at our last meeting, I'm looking at the... Uh, Alberni Valley Rescue Squad, the Port Alberni Marine Services Society, which we're doing right now, and then the Mid-Island Air Search and Rescue Society. We've done 6,000, oh, and sorry, there's one more. There's kind of four that are similar that we've, we're doing 6,000 for. But then for this year, for the Alberni Valley Rescue Squad, we've, we're doing 6,000 plus an additional 6,000 for more gear, I would be more comfortable then if we're going to do 6,000 to keep it like similar across the board for all these. 
And then just keep it to 6,000 for the Alberni Valley Rescue Squad as well, instead of the 12. Does that make sense? I'm looking at page 68 of our agenda. Um, and so Alberni Valley Rescue Squad is grant aid number seven. And Port Alberni Marine Rescue Society is 13. <sighs> Mid-Island Air Search and Rescue Society is 21. And I know there's one more that I'm, I'm missing because I know there's four kind of in the same boat. But that would be my comfort level because then my question is, is if we're doing six for all but 12 for one, that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at. I'm just trying to keep this in my mind fair across the board. Okay, I will have director, thank you for that. I'll have director Beckett and then director McCaff. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With respect to the Port Alberni Marine Rescue Society, I, I think I've stated that um, area A, um, given the service that's provided down the inlet, would be supportive and participating. Yeah. Uh, okay, that, can, that can be a uh, director McNabb, please go ahead. Okay, just uh, a, a bit of my logic with regards to the uh, amounts for the different search and rescue teams is the is the uh, Port Alberni search and rescue is <clears throat> the land version of it is a very very active group. Uh, they have far more like dramatically uh, far more um, call outs than, uh, than the, the Marine Search and Rescue uh, team does. And uh, that's why I would suggest that we uh, you know, invest a little more in that because uh, it just, that, that the impact on the community is uh, far greater. Okay, thank you. So the way that we would approach any changes just for your edification, Director Shannon, would be to um, move an amendment to the to the motion. That'd probably be the most straightforward way, but uh, that really depends on how we want to go forward. Are there any other comments on, on the motion that's on the table right now? Okay, seeing none. With the motion as it's written, uh, it is to award a grant and aid amount of six thousand dollars to the Port Alberni Marine Rescue Society, uh, with the following areas participating: the City of Port Alberni, electoral areas B, D, E, and F. And then Director or Director Beckett had indicated to add that. I don't think we'll need a, an amending motion for that. However, Director Beckett, if that's all right, we'll just add it to the main motion. If that's okay with Director. Directors, uh, and, and yeah, and Bodner. Okay, great. Okay, all those in favor? All opposed? Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Okay, so we have on the opposite side, we have two other um, recommended motions. So these weren't discussions based on, I think, what has already been, what has already transpired. So the next item is the Family Guidance Association with the following areas and the waiver of the section of 2.4, which is the double dipping waiver. So I think this is something where as long as we're upfront about it, I think that makes sense. And, and given the nature of the, the grant in this point, in, in this whole process, I think it's grants in aid rather than grant in aids, I think. <laughs> I realized that the other day, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, do we have any comments or questions regarding the recommended motions? Okay. Dr. McNabb, please go ahead. Um, I would move that uh, we do not, I don't know, I'm not quite sure if that's the way to move that, that, that we deny the uh, uh, grant application for the uh, Port Alberni Family Guidance Association. I'll speak to that after. All right, so we don't need to put an amount in if it's denial, so that makes sense. Okay, and do we have a seconder? Thank you, Dr. Shannon. 
Hey, uh, Dr. McNam, tell me, please. So I, I'm, I really struggle with this. I mean, I, I understand completely, you know, the benefit uh, of this type of organization, especially in times with COVID and, and some of the uh, psychological problems that have uh, come about because of it. But I just think it's out of our wheelhouse. I, I think it definitely is a provincial and probably federal responsibility. And we're dealing with uh, rural and civic uh, taxation. And uh, I think it just uh, is, a, is an absolute well that we just can't fill. Uh, and uh, I know that the provincial government did put in a bunch more funding for uh, 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 mental health. And I'm hoping that this organization, um, maybe even with our assistance can find some type of funding through through that, uh, that extra funding that the province put in. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Dr. Minions, please go ahead. Thank you. And then I see Dr. Steer and Dr. Shannon. Thank you. Um, I totally understand Director McNabb's comments. Um, I think, unfortunately, we are just in a position where there isn't anyone left for this year to support this, um, this really important work. So my recommendation would be that we um, do move forward with funding it, but that we be very, very clear that it is a one-time um, funding and, and ask them to please not come back next year as it is out of our wheelhouse. Um, I just think that the, you know, where we're at in the pandemic and the, just the critical importance of this um, initiative, I, I think we can't see it unfunded this year. Thank you. Thank you. Director Steer, please go ahead. Yeah, and I, I would just echo, uh, echo Director Minions. Uh, I, I fully respect and understand Director McNabb's point about the federal and provincial uh, response in this area. Unfortunately, when those two layers of government aren't stepping up into the plate at, at a critical time, uh, I would uh, completely echo Director Minion's point about a one-time funding at uh, this year to bring that uh, uh, service to the critical service that is necessary. I think it is really important uh, in a situation when, when they have not stepped up to the plate at, in the present moment to be able to fund this uh, in, in this respect. And, and uh, so I recommend that, with, that we do fund uh, this particular uh, for this particular year. Thank you, Director Steer. Um, your image is breaking up a bit. And your audio is pretty clear, though. So you might want to turn off your video um, and just use the raise hand function whenever you need to speak, because you'll just pop up right to the top of the, the list there. All right. OK, so the next item or the next speaker we have is Director Shannon. And then Director McNamp. Thank you. Um, I, I've been really struggling with this one because I'm, I'm trying to balance the, not necessarily Beaufort, but looking at the rural areas, some of the major tax increases we're seeing and the fact that it is still a needed service. Um, my, I guess my question is, as I'm looking at, and I'm going to sound like Director Kakura here, um, for years, we award the $26,000 to the Port Alberni Victim Services Society. And I'm, I'm struggling with the difference with how if we are saying you can come to us this year, but please don't come back next year, when there's some other ones that we, we give grant needs to annually, like if somebody wants to speak to that, I, I would love to hear about it because then in my mind, maybe we need to look at some of these other ones and to make up for where we can kind of like spread the wealth a little bit more. Maybe we have to look back at not doing 26,000, but reduce that so we can help some others with the funds that we do have. Just to put that out there for discussion. Thank you. Thank you for that. I have Dr. McNabb and then Director Block. So with regards to funding, I mean, the provincial budget only came out last week. Um, and I know that there was extra money put forward to this. So I'm suggesting that, you know, the opportunity may be there to go back to the provincial government and say, hey, look, uh, you know, like, we need this. 
Um, and as I say, with the, with the support of of the uh, municipalities and and the regional district, uh, perhaps you know they can they can achieve uh, uh, some sort of uh, temporary funding from the uh, provincial government. I mean, I it just uh, on a budgetary issue. I mean, my back's against the wall. I can't figure out a way to get past. Uh, 15 percent, quite frankly, like lower than 15 percent increase uh, in our area. And uh, when I see these things that are provincial items, um, you know, I, I, the, my community already pays towards that. Uh, so uh, we need to we need to make sure that the government, the provincial government, stands up and takes a, its responsibility in areas that are its responsibility. So thanks. Thank you for that. I have Director Bodner next. Is there anyone else? Thank you. Um, yes, it's quite a conundrum, I think, because if we've, we seem to have set a precedence by already giving to the, to the, to the victims. Um, and, and now we have another one coming up that's kind of down the same road as far as especially mental health. And, um, I am just wondering, though, if since we've already allocated twenty six thousand, if we, like Director Shannon said, taking some of that and and giving it to um, um, to the family guidance, it wouldn't be like we were looking for extra money since we've already made a commitment to one is just giving another one less. Um, and I agree also with, with Director McNabb in that um, somewhere there has to be, the, the province has to pick up the pieces and um, saying, I, don't, I just don't know whether saying, uh, don't ask us next year is the correct thing to do However, during COVID, there's a lot of, lot of um, mental and stress combined with drugs going on. So um, I would really like to see us do something for family guidance for this year. Thank you. Dr. McNabb, please go ahead. So just to, uh, in my mind, the, the two services are different services. Uh, the, the victim uh, victim services is related to community policing, and it is uh, kind of a standard standard method method of funding uh, uh, throughout the province. And uh, I mean, victims services uh, takes care of um, responding to uh, families that have uh, either their you know, death or serious injury in a car accident or uh, the uh, actual victims of, a, of an assault or a crime. Uh, they deal with uh, uh, looking after the families, trying to make sure that their basic needs are met and all the rest of it. And uh, so we've, we've funded that for several years um, and it is it is a, a standard method of, uh, throughout the province. So this is different than that. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? Dr. Shannon? Thank you. Um, I, I appreciate the comments on um, the victim services versus this one. It, it helps to have more background. Um, my, my only other thought is, is when we're looking at this motion, um, the application ha from the Port Alberni Family Guidance Association um, has um, indicated that the benefit is to the entire regional district. And I know that they were here and off the top of my head, I can't recall um, like if how much work they do on the West Coast or if they have people coming here, if there's an opportunity, if those directors would be interested. And I don't know if this would double dip with some of the stuff that's going on um, with what Tofino and Ukula and other areas might see. 
but if we have the opportunity to kind of help with the Alberni Valley with this, if we'd like to see it go through, if they would be interested in participating in this grant and aid and not just the Alberni Valley areas, just looking for thoughts, thanks. I'm gonna put Director Steer and Director Cole on the spot and then we'll go to uh, um, maybe Director Roberts. Go ahead, Director Steer. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I would certainly um, be interested in looking. I know that um, that those services aren't directly um, given onto the West Coast here, and we do have um, uh, we do have services that are related and similar. Um, I, I would not be, uh, but but saying that um, I, I recognize uh, that there is potential uh, for uh, people in our region uh, that also uh, uh, do spend quite a considerable amount of time in the Alberni Valley specifically maybe in the city of Port Alberni um, and that uh, I wouldn't be opposed to um, offering um, in, in this case uh, a, a proportional share of, of what might uh, be the overall ask and I I, I, uh, I apologize I'm in a closet and I don't have all of my I wasn't expecting to be in a in a meeting right now it's just um, so I don't have all my material with me it's back at the hotel room um, uh, but uh, it, I, I'm uh, Bottom line is I'm not I would not be opposed to um, uh, contributing a uh, from the uh, district of Tofino uh, a somewhat proportional share um, uh, of the of the request. Thank you for that, Director Steer. Uh, Director Cole, comments? Yeah, I concur with uh, Director Steer. I too am not opposed to um, taking that on. Thank you. And Dr. Roberts, please. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I'm not aware of uh, the outreach dealing with uh, our communities on the West Coast in particular, but um, I'm not opposed to uh, doing matching funds as, as with the city of Port Alberni and directly proportional. So um, I don't have an issue with it. I would, uh, you know, I would really like to see some more information with regards to uh, the issue that they they claim that uh, that our areas on the west coast receive benefit from services. I know there are mental health issues out there that uh, that uh, we deal with locally, but uh, I'm not aware of this. But as I say, it's it's uh, I would say a, a fairly worthwhile service, and uh, I wouldn't be prepared to go any higher than matching funds with what the city of Port Alberni has done, which is I think twenty seven hundred fifty dollars. Thank you for that. All right, thank you very much for that. Um, so with that in mind, I'm wondering if this changes the inclination of the board or the motion with the West Coast participating, is this something that is more acceptable or is this something that we should put to a vote? That might be a director meeting now problem or question. Well, I mean, my position really hasn't changed. So uh, we've got a motion on the floor. I guess we vote that motion and go from there. Yeah, I just wanted to check. Thank you. Okay, so with that, if we have any other comments or questions? I see Director Minions has turned her. No? Okay. Uh, Director Roberts, comment? Yeah, I'm just, I'm still just thinking about this. I. I I don't know if we can defer this to a later date um, to get more information uh, with regards to um, what the service actually provides for the for the entire West Coast. I know the other directors um, are not not too concerned about it, and nor am I. But I would still like to see more information with regards to the service they provide directly for the West Coast communities. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I have Director Shannon and then Director Beckett. Please go ahead. Thank you. I'm, I'm wondering if Terry can work her numbers magic, if she can quickly give us what it would be per area with everybody participating um, of the 18,500, or if we have a discussion of reducing that to 12,000, or if we come up with a number, another number. I know this is a tough discussion. I'm just, I mean, we're doing what we can to try and make this work. Thanks. Yeah, I can definitely give you a rundown. So at 18,500, 
the city of Port Alberni share would be 7,033, Tofino would be 3,085, Ukula would be 1,840, area A, 4,640, B, $322, C, $698, D, $2,775, E, $1,205, and F, $1,078. Thank you. Did you have a follow up, Director Shannon? Is that just what you wanted? I, if any other directors want to chime in about potentially reducing it to see if that would make it more palatable for um, taxation for John McNabb or if John wants to jump in on that. Thanks. I think for taxation, it seems. It it's less about the, the pure number and more about the effect it'll have on the percentage increase. So I, I don't know that we can do that off the top of our head quickly enough. So are there any other comments? Oh, yes. Sorry, Director Beckett. I didn't write down your name. Please go ahead. No problem at all, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, let me start the conversation off by saying that I agree with Director McNabb. Um, you know, we are uh, 11% or more. Uh, I am concerned about taxation with inflation, fuel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and further to Director Roberts uh, comments um, about deferring it, I don't wanna prolong this. Um, I guess I'd like some data uh, with respect to um, uh, the benefit that Banfield would receive, the you know the number of clients or, or something that that I can take back to our community and say that the four hundred and sixty four dollars um, is a drop in the bucket and look at the support that we are getting from them. Um, so anyway, those are those are my thoughts. I was silent until everybody started to to throw their support towards it, which is an admirable thing to do, but. Again, there's only so much money in the pot. So I, I guess I'm wondering, can I get any data back with respect to um, uh, the service that, that our community is receiving? Please go ahead, Terry. Yeah, we can defer this to the 23rd and we can reach out to them and ask for um, what their service or if they can give us some more particulars about the area of service for um, particularly Banfield and the West Coast, if the directors would like that, we definitely can do that. 23rd will be the last day unless we want to um, set an additional board meeting to adopt the budget, but we do have that 23rd meeting that we can still be making decisions before we finalize. So that's an option. The closer to March 31st we get, the more insane it's going to be, I think. So if we can try to get that work done quicker, that would be good. Or that decision made, that would be good. I think the only thing I'm going to add is I, I don't mind deferring this. That would take a motion to table or delay the motion. I don't know what the specific language is, but the we do need to have a better conversation about how we're going to approach this because there are going to be a lot of things that are worthy that will be coming to our table. And so it really becomes evident that we need to have like a values-based approach to how we approach grants and aid and so on and so forth. Because I think Director Shannon and I think for years now, Director McNabb has pointed out the inconsistencies on in how we approach these things. Um, I'm inclined to follow up uh, in regards to this program with the province and the federal government, given that they've created ministries centered around mental health. Although there is a lack of clarity in regards to the actual activities that this group undertakes because there are gaps that can be helped in prevention and getting, getting youth to the table to actually engage with mental health services and so on and so forth. Um, my nation goes through the First Nations Health Authority for this sort of thing. And I'll say that because of the funding and the systems that have been set up, for example, if someone in my tribe needed to access mental health uh, programs, the wait times for First Nations is weeks and the wait times for everyone else is months. And that is a huge gap in regards to mental health and that sort of thing. And that's not necessarily our problem, but if there are things that are that we can do to help prevent those costs in the future for even having to engage with that, that's good. But I don't know if that's in the uh, terms of reference for this group. 
So I think that's very important to understand. Dr. Shannon, please go ahead. Thank you. Um, you kind of started going towards what I was going to suggest. If we're going to make a mo, I know we haven't voted on this one yet, but if we're going to make a motion to defer, can we include a letter or communication with the province about this and their upcoming budget that they have presented? I, I think there's something that we can do in regards to specifically this, this um, group, but also in regards to how we're going to navigate these types of conversations, because I think victim services fits into mental health because of the trauma that happens to people. You really have to address that sooner than later to get them on the healing path. Um, I'm inclined because of the way that the, the budgeting works I was initially inclined in paying for this and then asking for the province and the feds to reimburse us, kind of like a Jordan's principle sort of approach, um, just to get things moving because it's clear we're doing stuff that the province and the federal government should be doing, but that's always gonna be tough. So that's a hard sell for a lot of folks. Um, yeah, we're just gonna be faced with more and more of this as time goes by, you know, the, the shadow of my Kakura. Um, and the wisdom that he brought to the table, it goes long. There's, it's always going to be like this. Download is always going to happen. So I want to be fair to what Director McNabb is saying. It's not about the worthiness of the cause. It's about the system that's been set up. So I would prefer that we defer this decision until we know more. But I do think that the conversation should be oriented around what are, what are, what is the rules that we bring to the table that we should be providing and to what degree do we need to advocate on behalf of these folks. At this point, I'm more inclined to provide our, our services for our grants expert to help these people engage with the province, but I don't know if that's a good use of staff time. So those are the kind of things that maybe I'm looking at, but I need to know more. Maybe there's something I'm not thinking about. Um, yeah, so with that, Director McNabb, go ahead. So I would move that we defer this uh, to the next meeting or the appropriate time to let staff investigate it. Thank you. And do we have a seconder? Thank you, Director Shannon. And do we have uh, any further comments? Thank you, Director Steer. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, sorry, Chair Jack. I just wondered, do we have to deal with the motion on the table at this point? I, it was... Uh, was first and seconded. Uh, do we have to deal with that? It just as a point of process, I'm, I'm not sure. There, it, it was the motion on the table at this point. Yeah, so, so it was moved and seconded to, to deny. And then another motion was made, which I think is legal to do, to defer the actual, uh, like, it's like hitting pause on the conversation. And as long as it's passed by a majority of, I think it's a majority of folks here, then that should be fine. Okay, thank you. Wendy, go ahead. Um, just to correct, though, because there is a motion on the floor, um, it, um, what we would do is table the, either vote on this motion or table it. So we would table the motion. So this motion to deny would come back to the table. Yes. So it would be under unfinished business or right. on an agenda. Correct. Yeah. So it would still be the original motion. However, whatever we decide to do, we could go through that in. Right, so what it's a motion to table, actually, instead of defer. Yeah, okay, because, because there's a motion on the table. Correct. Right? All right, that, that sounds fine. Thank you. Okay, so with that, uh, thank you for your uh, question of clarification, Director Steer. Okay, all those in favor? All opposed? Okay, motion carried. Okay, thank you. And thank you for the conversation. I know it's tough, but I just, we're talking about the issues, not the values at that point. Okay, so the next item here, uh, or the next, one we have here is to waive section 2.4 of the grant and aid policy regarding double dipping for the following organizations. And it is ACOS, the Alberta Community uh, and, oh, Women's Services Society. That's not ACOS, that's something else. And then the Alberta District Welfare, which because it's an in-kind contribution is, is somewhat different. So do we have anyone um, willing to move forward with those motions? Dr. Shannon, thank you. Do we have a seconder? Thank you, Director Bodner. Dr. McNabb, please go ahead. So, someone's within all of these. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, somewhere's within the volumes of paperwork with regards to the budget. I did see that there was a two thirds requirement for 
voting on certain items. I'm thinking this is likely one of those. Okay. If that's the case, then we'll we'll make sure. I think everyone voted to the positive anyway, though. Mm -hmm. So. No. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks. I uh, just trying to clarify. Like I said, we're we're looking at a book this thick, so. Okay. Now it, it's important to make a distinction between committee and board. So I think that's good. Thank you. Okay. Any any further comments? Okay. Seeing none. All those in favor of the waiver. All opposed. Okay, motion carried. Thank you. Okay, so now we have this the next item, which is 4B, which is the proposed changes to the draft 2022-2026 financial plan. And that is contained from page 16 on in your kit, the one that you downloaded from the site. So Terry, if you wanted to take a break, sure. thank you. Uh, so at the so at the February twenty fourth, um, e Alberni Valley and Banfield Services Committee, um, there was some discussion regarding the Alberni Valley Emergency Planning proposed budget, and um, the directors had requested that staff come back with an option to decrease because the budget increases. Off the top of my head, I think it's about a hundred thousand dollars from the prior year. Um, so we did take a look at this, and the only thing really that is kind of a it's a one time item but also has significant cost to it is the hazard risk and vulnerability assessment project which would be actually for the entire regional district meaning the entire regional district that we provide emergency planning for so not district of Ecula and Tofino but um, Bamfield Long Beach and the Alberni Valley so the total project is 40,000 we could remove this project this year and it would have about a $32,000 impact um, to reduce the Alberni Valley Emergency Planning Program. However, this is kind of the next step before we can update the emergency plans. Um, so it is a very important step. Um, as another option that I thought might be of interest to the directors, because for the Alberni Valley, it's the same participants, um, with the exception that you checklist it also participates in the airport, is that the airport, the Alberni Valley Airport in 2021, got a $180,000 grant for COVID restart um, funding to address operations, which we weren't anticipating when we drafted the budget last year. So it was an additional influx of cash that we weren't thinking was it going to arrive. So the capital reserve fund for um, that service benefited because we basically paid for most of uh, almost all of our operations last year using that grant money. Um, so we could instead, as a different option, remove $30,000 or $32,000 even if you'd like um, from the contribution to capital in the Alberni Valley Regional Airport. Um, those infrastructure gaps aren't going anywhere. They exist in every service. So it's not that we won't use the money and that it's overtaxing, but I would say it's going to have less impact on our work plan in 2022 than what the removal of the HRVA um, project would in emergency planning. So uh, staff are here to answer questions. If you have specifics about the HRVA itself, um, Heather's on the line too, because I don't know the specifics of that project, um, but happy to answer any questions. Dr. McNabb, please go ahead. So I guess my question is to Heather. Um, the, the release of the grant, the $240,000 grant for regards to fire smart, I'm just wondering about the workload and how this uh, particular project would kind of uh, um, filter through that. I'm thinking that we've got enough on our table already. Uh, with the fire smart program and that maybe this is something that logistically could be deferred go ahead heather thank you um so the fire smart grant that we announced on monday we received two hundred and forty thousand dollars, and that's what director mcnab is um asking about uh so that was in conjunction with the shot and the city um, in that grant is funding for uh, a staff resource or a contractor resource. We're just working out the details of that right now. So um, that program will be better supported uh, in the coming year by someone other than myself and Karen. Um, 
so it doesn't really impact the HRVA work. Uh, we do have a lot on our plate, um, but um, it would be me leading that, that process. So I hope that answers your question. Please go ahead, Dr. McNabb. So the, the other piece of that I was wondering about is, is how much of this uh, understanding is actually going to come from the FireSmart program? The FireSmart program should have then identify significant hazards with relate, relate to uh, interface fire and so forth. So um, since the Alberni Valley Emergency Plan was done in 2013, um, we've had the Alberni Valley and Banfield Community Wildfire Protection Plan developed. So that plan is actually what's going to guide uh, some of the work into the HRVA. So it's not, we already know the risk um, in the Alberni Valley is quite high compared to other regions. Um, the Fire Smart assessments that'll be done on residential properties will sort of dial in on the, you know, the neighborhood and, and, and encourage people to do work on their property, but I don't, it's not really going to be guiding the HRVA work. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? So we just let the simmer and then maybe go over the next topic. It, yeah. Okay. So if no changes to that service, is that where we're at? Is that what you're asking, um, Chair Jack? Yeah, we'll, we'll give it time just in case. This okay. might be something where it just needs to park for a bit. So we'll, I'll check at the end of the presentation, so to speak. Fair enough. Okay. So Beaver Creek Volunteer Fire Department, um, Director McNabb and I have um, spent some time looking at this service and um, he um, is looking at his 19% tax increase. So this service is tight. The cost of running this fire department is challenging. The apparatus is aging. It's getting more expensive by the year. We are not close to closing this infrastructure gap. Um, however, there are some cost increases in the service this year. So um, I have put this on the agenda as um, requested by Director McNabb, and he is looking to reduce his contribution to capital from 140 or 170,000 to 140 in 2022. Um, it does not put our capital reserve fund into a negative balance, but it, it's a tight reserve at this point. Dr. McNabb, please go ahead. So, um, I, I mean, I'm not doing this or suggesting this uh, without thinking it through. I, uh, one of the things that has occurred in the last year that we didn't have benefit of before is the available to use uh, community works funding for fire departments. This, in my mind, has reduced our, our uh, specific need to, to build uh, reserves to the, the same level as we previously did, because, uh, for example, we you know we've got a project on the fire hall itself, which is being funded by uh, community works funding, which would have been coming from capital reserve. So, uh, I understand completely about uh, asset management and and uh, depreciation and all of the rest of it. Uh, but I really do think that this is something that we can achieve. And uh, you know, if we go into next year where we're, we're looking at uh, reassessment of um, areas like uh, Cherry Creek and Beaufort, where we can get back to kind of a level playing field, then perhaps the director of the day can reinstate that, uh, that formula and that amount. But I would move that the... Uh, Committee, the whole um, uh, this uh, this recommendation doesn't quite read like a motion, so I'm just going to redo it. Here. Um, yeah, the 17. It doesn't quite read right. So I would move the the committee whole recommend the tax requisition and fund and capital fund in the Beaver Creek Volunteer Fire Department. Proposed budget be reduced by thirty thousand dollars 
and the draft 2022-2026 financial plan be adjusted accordingly. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Oh, thank you, Dr. Shannon. Are there any other comments? Let's see. Oh, Dr. Roberts, go ahead. Looking at the uh, capital funding for Beaver Creek, I'm just wondering, I don't know if this would would help at all uh, with uh, with regards to the budgets. Um, I think they indicated that they wanted to replace all their self-contained green apparatus for 180,800. I'm wondering if you could split that up over two years. I tried that. You did? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, forget that. Then. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Okay, uh, unless there are any further comments or questions, this is for the motion that Dr. McNabb moved, seconded by Dr. Shannon. All those in favor? All opposed? Okay, motion carried. Okay. All right, so unless we'd like to go back, the next item is... Item 5A, Summary Changes. Dr. Shannon, go ahead. Thanks, I'm, I'm gonna jump on the go back here for a minute and look at the tax requisition to the airport budget um, suggestion by staff. I, I struggle with, I mean, from Heather's comments, this hazard and risk vulnerability vulnerability assessment um, is something that is will obviously need to be done. But at the same time, I mean, I don't live in Beaver Creek, but I, I mean, I feel for Director McNabb because I have been hearing from Beaver Creek residents. So if we can reduce that, the airport by 30,000, and maybe Director McNabb's even interested in doing both to try and help out. I mean, that's up for discussion. I I would move that um, the recommendation that the committee of the whole, um, that the tax requisition and contribution to capital fund in the AVRA proposed budget be reduced by 30,000 and the draft 2022 to 26 financial plan be adjusted accordingly. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Director McNabb. Moved and seconded. Are there any other comments? I think this is a good move and I'd like to preserve 4.1 in the strategic plan. So this seems to be the way to do it. So, okay. Any further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? All opposed? Okay, motion carried, thank you. Okay, so we took a piecemeal approach to the motions that are contained in the briefing note, does that mean that we can kind of ignore the recommended one or do we have to have that as a capstone? I, th I think that's fine. That gave me direction for this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. With that, then we'll move on to item 5A, which is a report of the summary of changes to the financial plan. Great. So nothing needs to be done here. I just wanted the directors to be aware like, of all the changes that have been made since that February 16th um, initial presentation. So majority of these were done from the many meetings we've done together since that time, um, but also with discussions with the individual directors for services that were only in their individual area. Um, so have made all those adjustments. And um, at this point, uh, I think we're ready to give first reading to it this afternoon. I will draft up a proposed amendment to first reading based on these three motions that we just made this morning um, so that we can incorporate that in our first reading this afternoon. Um, and I, yeah, besides that, I think that most of the discussions are done. I'll bring forward that family guidance on the 23rd and then just looking for any other changes the directors are requesting at this time. Thank you, Director McNabb, please go ahead. So turning over every rock as I did in this budget pretty much, uh, the one thing I did notice is that in rural planning, um, the revenues were, I thought, understated. Uh, we did a, a review of uh, and changes in the bylaw with regards to uh, building permits and uh, um, we, we certainly are in a, uh, 
a robust market for building. And I, I just really thought that based on last year uh, and the year before, the revenues uh, estimation was not what it could be. Go ahead, Terry. Um, I would say that the, um, the activity in the department, because of the, the fees are still very low, the activity in the department for rural planning is not necessarily reflected by the revenues that um, they're, they're just not a direct correlation because our fees are so low, they just don't um, recognize the amount of staff time that it takes to process these applications. Um, we did take a look at them after the recommendations. I think that was at the electoral area directors committee and we did adjust them a little bit. We can adjust them again. There's just a lot of risk involved and I wouldn't recommend it. The, we have looked at the, the, like from a building inspector um, aspect, we have looked at the revenues over these last two months and it just depends on what type of building is getting built as to how uh, much these revenues are. So. I think they're on pace to what they could be. Um, I don't ever want to over budget because we can't get ourselves into a deficit position. So I'm always hesitant about that. Um, but we staff could look at it again and um, I could have a discussion with um, Mr. Erg before the 23rd and we could come back with some ideas if you would like. So oh, that works for me, thanks. Mike, did you have any comments? I saw you open or turn on your video oh I, I just wasn't sure um sort of uh if terry wanted any anything um wanted me to add anything i certainly uh agree with with terry's assessment i mean the uh the fees we charge for redevelopment applications um are are very low especially for the majority of the ones that will be you know an example will be the ones we're dealing with this afternoon um you know <clears throat> some rezoning applications are three hundred dollars in a and a public hearing fee. So the, the revenue is just, the, you know, they, they don't necessarily uh, reflect the reflect the work, but I'll sit down with Terry and, and uh, if we can come up with some options, we'll certainly bring that back. Okay, thank you for that, Mike. Um, any further comments? I think this is just receiving the report for a motion. Director Shannon, go ahead. Yeah. I wasn't even unmuted. Sorry, I had to get rid of my cat. Um, I we Director McNabb brought this up at our last meeting or one of our many meetings in the last few weeks. Um, and just to just to ask, um, I mean, when we're looking at the AVRA, we've got because I know we discussed the equipment shelter because we're at four hundred thousand dollars for that. Do we already have like a building plan and everything for that? That that's where that number is coming from and design and is there any wiggle room there or adjustments um because from my understanding we were still looking to buy one piece of equipment i just just to kind of open up that discussion again if staff have any be like nope that's what it is or we've got a little wiggle room thanks i'll go ahead jenny uh thank you uh it's for the chair so I, I did discuss this with mark and um as mentioned, we're looking at doing sort of a pre-engineered um, standard for these buildings. We have one building going at the Long Beach Airport and one building uh, will be going at Avra. So we've, uh, we're currently doing the detailed design, but these are our closest cost estimates right now is 400,000. So we do have grant funding for the LBA one and we're looking to actually um, issue and award them together to get some cost efficiencies because obviously if you do the design and the construction at the same time, we should get better pricing on this. Um, but the $400,000 is actually a relatively reasonable cost considering what we're looking at for a lot of other construction projects. Um, as far as the equipment goes, this is for equipment that we currently have that is degrading. And so um, although 400,000 does seem like a, an expensive amount, it does save us in the long run so that we can maintain that equipment and make sure that we don't have to replace it early and allows us to basically maintain the standard that we're trying to achieve at Avra. Um, I know, you know, with the strategic plan, action plan and the committee and all of the work that we've been doing, we're actually making some pretty good progress there. So I think this really aligns with the plan and the work that we've been doing, but I do understand the question. So 
You know, I hope that answers that. Go ahead, Terry. I would just like to say that there isn't, so when we're spending out of the capital plan, there isn't a direct link from our capital projects to our tax requisition either. It really is that contribution to capital um, during the year that is what is creating the tax requisition. I'm just going to see if I can get this up fast enough. Um, and our our contribution to capital, we just reduced by 30,000, but is going to be 400,000 in uh, 2022. Um, and that reserve is healthy, like it appears healthy, but anything we replace at the airport is incredibly expensive. So um, yeah, again, we could come back with more options. I know that we had a discussion about the 30 and we were comfortable removing the 30. If we wanted to go more than that, I think we'd really have to, um, Mark and Jenny and I would really have to sit down to discuss where that would leave us um, moving forward. Director McNabb, please go ahead. So this isn't actually on this agenda or this report, but one thing I was thinking about was with regards to the rural administration uh, budget and the amount put in for um, uh, elections. And I'm just really wondering why this isn't an amortized uh, figure. I mean, we're electing a new board for a four year period. Why would we put it all in the year of the exiting board? Uh, I mean, it would make a lot more sense to, to amortize it for the four years coming up because that's who you're electing. Yeah, fair question. So um, it is not, it, it's not a capital asset, so I don't have the ability to amortize it. We are going to attempt to do the opposite starting next year. We discussed this and implemented this during our 2021 budget is creating these what we're, I think we called them rate stabilization reserves. So starting next year, we will budget one quarter of what we think the election costs will be four years from now and build that reserve up over four years. And then on that fourth year, we would use that money um, to do that. So yes, we can do it in that manner. We can't do it the opposite way from a, um, an accounting legality standpoint. I think mathematically that has the same outcome though, would it not? Yeah. yeah. Just, just um, not, just not this year. Yeah, yeah, that's really. No, I, I'm, I'm just basically. I, we just thought of this now. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> how long will we be having elections? That could be something that we communicate as a part of the budget once it's passed as well. That these are things that we're planning on doing. That's some of those numbers that will give people pause when they read the paper or listen to the radio. This is something that can be a part of that conversation. Um, because I think that is, from an electoral perspective, something that needs to be noted because that's that's the statutory spending requirement at that point. So, and that's a good conversation. It's off topic though. So maybe what we can do is move to receive the report. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. McNeil, and seconded by Dr. Shannon. And any comments, further comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? All opposed, motion carried, thank you. Okay, so that brings us to late business in which there are none. Do we have any questions? Mr. Chair, we have no attendees um, on the meeting today and uh, no questions or comments have been received at our email address. Okay, thank you. So with that then, if we could have a motion to adjourn, please. Oh, please go ahead. Can I just comment on that? I, I mean, it, it's amazing that the amount of um, verbal assault we get for some of these items, uh, you know, with regards to the budget and other things, that that people aren't willing to spend the time to actually see the work that goes into these things uh, by by actually joining the meeting when they you know have the opportunity. A uh, far better opportunity than, opportunity than we've had in the past. I, I just really think that it's up to, up to taxpayers to know uh, the real picture and not to surmise uh, the, the, what they're thinking. So uh, that's just my comment. Now there'll be more things coming out of Woodward. <laughs>
I'll just thump the table like I'm in preference at that point. That is that is a very good point. It does seem as though residents and citizens and, and folks who live here, they pick and choose what matters to them. And those issues exist in a silo. Um, for example, the, the amount of engagement that was seen and mobilization that was seen in regards to sort and go, while that disappoints me as a person, a leader is, is really good organizing, right? And, and I think that was done in a really organized manner. Part of the problem with, with how we budget and that sort of thing is that it's not well known, it's not taught in school in the same way that understanding one program can be. And I think that's gonna be a communications issue that we need to really, really focus on as we move into the future because the our budgets and what we do, especially if we're going to be looking at social and strategic procurement and other items, there's going to be need to be a scrutiny there, but there's going to need to be a nuance there as there as well. So, um, yeah, it's it's too bad, but I think there's more that we can do to engage. But also, I think Director McNabb has rightly pointed out that there is a responsibility in citizenship as well as uh, a list of rights. We don't always measure up as a society to what should be. Uh, how we remind people of that without turning them off is going to be a challenge. Okay. Um, so with that, then, if we can have a motion to adjourn, or yes. Thank you, Director Minev, and seconded by Director Cole, and all of those in favor? All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you all for, for coming. And uh, I have to say, Terry, 